thrilled to be able to, to talk about the financial statement that came out yesterday, the economic update. Uh, there's so many things in there that are, are timely and needed. Uh, as viewers will know, we pivoted very quickly so that we could address the issues as they came up. The $17 billion, and it's actually a $20.5 billion uh, deficit this year, but with contingencies in there, uh, money set aside a billion dollars for health because we're not quite sure of everything yet. Uh, $2.5 billion for uh, uh, unique uh, contingency for, for unforeseen circumstances across the economy. We're just in phase one, but uh, trying to, we're supporting people, we're supporting uh, businesses, we're trying to put the money into health care where it's needed the most, and we're trying to be nimble at the same time. The, the economic update is called an economic update and not a budget because the, the fundamental difference is a budget does multi-year projections on a whole variety of issues. We knew that to do that would be maybe a little bit of guesswork. And so the finance minister made the bold decision to say, we're not going to do a budget with multi-year projections on everything. We're going to do a financial update so that we can get the pieces where we need them the most. So we're being realistic about what we can predict. Uh, he, he did predict a 0% growth in the first year with 2% each year after that. And that's pretty unprecedented for a government to, to not project growth. So we think we're being realistic and, and taking things as far as we can. But this is fundamentally going to change the way that we're doing business. Uh, it, it's already changed things in my world, in the court world. Uh, it's changing how people are interacting. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing, uh, you know, people having uh, Zoom parties where, where they just they want that social connection. It's changing how we're operating in every sense. I, I can tell you where we traditionally have a cabinet meeting once a week. We're having cabinet meetings every day, and some days twice. Uh, and some of these meetings, a lot of the meetings, go on two and three hours. Uh, there are no light decisions taken. The the emergency powers that people hear about, if I can just take a second, I'll explain how that works. There, there's a blanket emergency power that says you can make orders. So the emergency uh, blanket order itself doesn't actually do anything except enable us to make suborders. And that's where you're seeing us make decisions about uh, changing rules for things. For instance, in the in the tribunal's world, uh, changing the rules so that uh, people can file things online. Uh, we're, we're looking at a whole variety of very practical changes, but they're only effective for the term of the emergency. And so that's a bit of the balance. A lot of the things that we're changing are only there for the term of the emergency. So uh, it gives us time for for second thought to see, is this really what, what the public wants and needs in the long term? It's not, not all permanent. The level of cooperation may be unprecedented. I, I know the Minister of Municipal Affairs, Steve Clark, he's talking with municipalities every single day. I'm talking to, to our, my municipal partners uh, in, in our area, Barrie and Springwater and Oromodonte, uh, finding out what's going on, what they need, what's working, what's not working. Uh, and then on the federal side, I talk to Doug Shipley uh, almost every day to, to get a sense of where things are headed there. Uh, it really is a, a cooperative effort. And as you would know and the viewers would know, Andrea Kanjin and, and John Broussard and Barry Innisville uh, also talk quite a bit together. And sometimes all four of us get together and say what's going on. So there's a lot of discussion. And, and out of that comes good decisions. It's it's really it's really heartening to to see the the variety of people coming together to make tough decisions in in real time. So we've made decisions in the court system in particular. Uh, we made decisions to do things that we've never done before to make sure that we're protecting the most vulnerable. Uh, the the Ontario Court of Justice. I've been working with the Chief Justice. I, I talk to her regularly uh, about how we're making sure the people that are are up for bail and remand are getting their hearings and and making sure the crowns are reviewing all their files to to move as many people as possible uh, to the place where they should be. Uh, there's there's just it's really not an ideological approach. It's from a fiscal perspective. You save so that you can spend when you need it. And and that's what we've been doing. So we're now in a position where people need our help and, and we're going to give that help. I want people to know that their their political offices are functioning. So I meet with my staff every day. Uh, we answer the emails, we answer the phone calls, we get back to people. If you have questions, if you have concerns, it's helpful for us to hear from you so that we can make sure that we're, we're doing the things that, that matter most to people. 
Uh, and that's all of the offices are like that. So don't hesitate to phone. Don't hesitate to send in an email. We want to hear from you and we will get back to you.